notice it from here. Let's go back to that. When I had added the recent um, Volkswagen, like the mock-up right here, down here, and you can see this, like this, one page, full page. All right? Then notice that hand sign. Now, there's a article that we had got while we were doing some of the basic research for this. This is uh, Germany, uh, the fabulous recovery. There's 18 golden rays coming out of a golden sun or star, creepy German corporate sigil logo, so forth and so on. Michael Sarian says that the Volkswagen logo could be um, an astrological sign for Aquarius, the dawning of the age of Aquarius, which would be something very curious. But let's see if we can just forward it to um forward it to this particular article that we haven't had a chance to get into this particular article right here. Oh, here it goes. And there seem to be a lot of these kind of articles creeping up on the internet as of lately. This right here, you see where it says it says the CIA right, the CIA dethrones Hala Selassie. Or at least that I guess was on their wish list. You understand? And this was posted by Addis Abram on July 27, 2011. Then they put a forward quote, messing up with Zion, messing up with Zion. And this was, a, it says, the following French intelligence report was made on September 20th, 1974, two weeks after Emperor Haile Selassie was deposed. Now, this is the uh, IPS report that was made on or about that time, September 20th. Now, as we go forward, we see it says some interesting thing here. It says, um, waving goodbye to his defangled lions and to one teenage youth who responded by yelling, hang the thief, Haile Selassie was unceremoniously packed into the back seat of a Volkswagen last week and whisked off by Ethiopia's CIA-trained progressive military. All right? Now it says, despite his confinement, Selassie has been spared, at least temporary, a worse fate. It says, the Britain's Daily Telegraph, in an article prior to his downfall, wondered about the dilemmas of the Ethiopian Armed Forces Coordinating Committee, or the AFCC, in consummating their oft-interrupted act of coup d'etat, what Le uh, Figario called a creeping pooch, does it say a creeping pooch, and also speculated, right, this is also speculated, that the age potentate, remember what it says in Timothy, the only true potentate, the king of kings, the age potentate, might die a natural death before the ponderous and um, cautiously executed military revolution reaches its conclusion. Hmm. The AFCC sputtered along for seven months stage managing a scenario whose script was written 20 years ago. Look at that. Whose script was written, you see what it says? Whose script was written 20 years ago by the CIA. It is no accident that the international press has referred frequently to the, what is it, 1952 to 54. It says, uh, NASA uh, Nagib maneuvers in Egypt in covering recent Ethiopian events, refining the machinations and processes surrounding NASA's free offices. The CIA created a complete philosophy and modus operandi for, quote, progressive military governments 
to be used whenever conditions are right. Whenever conditions are right, then it goes on to speak about two, three, many Egypts. In the past five years, the CIA defined necessity has brought the progressive military tactic into frequent play under conditions of worldwide economic collapse potential revolutionary uh, ferment has been co-opted um, consistently by brutish military regimes peddling radical rhetoric. Africa is dotted by such regimes. In recent months, the experiment has been brought to the, what is this, semi, the semi-advanced sector like Greece, and Portugal. Now advanced countries are slated for the same treatment, with Britain the first target. What is going on? Now this is a very interesting, this is, remember this document is dated from September 20th, said to be dated from September 20th, 1974. Now it says, in Ethiopia, the AFCC quickly identified and isolated the modal points of Selassie's power base. The Coptic Church, a reported 100,000-man patriotic association loyal to the emperor, and the backward peasantry. From the beginning, each element could attempt at best only a pathetic marginal line defense against a multi-flanked offensive. At worst, they grew demoralized and terrorized the near-unanimous mode of response. At the slightest resistance, as when uh, some old guard senators humbly pleaded for mercy for their jailed colleagues in mid-July, the AFCC, ruthlessly squelched it, in this case by rounding up practically every aristocrat in the country and tossing the whole bunch into detention. As the New York Times of September 20th described it, the recipe is to move slowly and deliberately with a mixture of toughness and persuasion and to discredit opponents in the eyes of the citizenry, end quote. Such precision has been essential to undermine by stages a complex brief belief structure, a complex belief structure centered on the person of the emperor. During the past seven months, the AFCC encouraged demonstrations of students and workers calling them off at will and crushed them if they became troublesome, as did a communications workers sitting in April and uh, this week's student unrest, this week's student unrest. In these public manifestations, the AFCC were aided by Maoist crazies in the student and intellectual circles and by labor leaders in the CIA-dominated Confederation of Ethiopian Labor Unions, well-trained in manipulating workers' ferment. These staged maneuvers had to be combined effect, had the combined effect of letting off steam, channeling rage, terrorizing the opposition and creating enough chaos and confusion to establish that the military was the only stable reality. Now, you'll recall the Ethiopia First stuff, right? Well, the Ethiopia First stuff says simultaneously an ideology was manufactured labeled Ethiopia First, Ethiopia Tikkadem. It combines all of the characteristics of a typical progressive military regime, extreme nationalism emphasizing the special qualities 
of national heritage, complete moral integrity to contrast with the old regime's bankruptcy, anti-imperialism, virulent anti-communism, and vague lip service to international third force, third world solidarity. This new religion saturates the controlled national media. The only obstacle to the operation was the AFCC's own hesitation, own hesitation to rule. They tiptoed around the final seizure of power. Finally, the AFCC led um, Lieutenant General Amon, Crazy Mike Andam, whose peculiarities are detailed in the Africa Report in IPS number 19, out of the bag as temporary frontman. The necessity of participating in the CIA's reorganization of the region and coping with complete national economic breakdown and residual unrest will force the AFCC to play a stronger hand. As the emperor walked through the palace with his armed escort, liveried servants. Okay, this is a this is part of another particular um, article, but we'll just conclude with this. It says, as the emperor walked through the palace with his armed escort, liveried servants began to gather and follow. They all looked shocked and bewildered. When they arrived at the front portico, footmen, maids, imperial guards, gardeners, and other staff, both male and female, had gathered on the steps and at the windows of the palace. Dabila Dinsa said most of the men looked stunned, and many were staring at their shoes or the ground. It was obvious to them all what was happening. Most were openly weeping. A small caravan of vehicles pulled up. The emperor caught sight of the car which was to take him away from the Jubilee Palace for the last time. It was a small baby blue Volkswagen Beetle, a far cry from the Rolls Royce and Benz limousines that he was accustomed to. Members of the Dirk have since claim that this car was chosen in order to take the emperor away with maximum anonymity to protect him from the anger of the people and not to humiliate him in any way. This is belied by the fact that the small car was escorted in front and back by two jeeps with mounted machine guns, making it just about the most conspicuous car in the city. For years afterward, the Doug would often display this car in public as the final humiliating end of Haile Selassie's reign. So this statement is obvious in its absurdity. As the emperor was driven away, his servants began to wail and weep loudly, many beating their chests as if at a traditional funeral. All of all his former subjects, the staff of his palaces, people with little power and relatively small personal gain from his reign, have remained the most consistently loyal to the emperor's memory. Once outside the gates, however, the scene changed dramatically. This, because remember, we just read the CIA article, all uh, this was stage drama. It says that the small crowd of men which gathered opposite the palace gates began to scream, labor, 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 thief, 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 as the emperor passed by, at the emperor as he passed. They followed the little group of cars as they drove slowly through the city running after them, screaming abuse at the man who had reigned over them till that very morning, which was 
September 11th, 1974. Members of the Derg have claimed that this was a spontaneous demonstration by people who were enraged at the emperor following the previous night's broadcast of the hidden famine. The Derg leader and subsequent dictator Mengistu Haile Mariam in an interview with a biographer, someone named uh, Gennet um, Ayala, told her that he found the denunciations of the emperor distasteful and hated the fickleness of those people who only weeks earlier would have bowed to the ground before him. This statement, of course, should be taken with a grain of salt, as Mengistu spent his entire rule of Ethiopia trying to demolish the memory of Haile Selassie and his reign. However, others have stated that the group of young men who suspiciously gathered at the gates just as the group of officers arrived to enter the palace that morning were actually a group of soldiers ordered by the Derg to appear in civilian dress. This sounds more like this, what they call it, a cloak and dagger conspiracy in order to give the dethronement a look of civilian approval and perhaps also to humiliate Haile Selassie I. If this was the case, it was an unnecessary or necessity, unnecessary and cruel measure. For within minutes of Radio Ethiopia announcing that Haile Selassie I had been removed from the imperial throne, students from the university that still bore his name ran through the streets burning and and tar, burning and I guess tearing portraits of the emperor. Mm-hmm. The always radically leftist and ardently anti um, monarchist students were jubilant. They were jubilant. This is clear this way. They were jubilant and they quickly took up cries of Teferi, thief, and sang songs sarcastic de depicting the wailing of the aristocracy at the end of their days eating fine lamb and chicken. They tossed flowers at the soldiers guarding the city and sang the praises of the dirt and the Ethiopian revolution. Around the world, leaders and governments hailed the peaceful transfer of power in Ethiopia, commending the military in carrying out the coup in a civilized and bloodless manner. Cries of Ethiopia, Tikadim, Ethiopia before all, and the even more ambitious um well yala minim dem Ethiopia tick them without any bloodshed Ethiopia before all, which was quickly incorporated into a popular song, were heard on the streets and on television and radio. Ethiopia was supposedly embarking on a bright and happy future, emerging from centuries of darkness and backwardness. It would be only a very short time later that the hollowness and falseness of their dreams would be dreadfully apparent. In the immediate aftermath of the dethronement, the Derg issued a decree establishing itself as the provisional military administrative council or PMAC and declaring martial law. The constitution was suspended, the imperial court disbanded, 
and the Empress of Chilot, which was the Supreme Court of the land abolished, as was the Crown Council, Parliament was immediately dissolved. The Derg did not, however, formally abolish the monarchy at that time. Instead, it was announced that Crown Prince Asfa Wilson would be anointed king, quote, king, end quote, of Ethiopia, as opposed to emperor, upon his return from medical care in Switzerland. In the following days, it was announced that the title of Conquering Lion of Judah was henceforth to be changed to Conquering Lion of Ethiopia and that Prince Asa Wilson was to be strictly titular monarch with no political power whatsoever. The brief period of freedom of the press was ended as part of the emergency measures of martial law and would never see the light of day again for 17 years. The Derg in an effort to gain support with more liberal elements, announced that Lieutenant General Amon Michael Andam would serve as its new chairman and acting head of state and head of government. General Amon was an Eritrean-born veteran in his youth of the war against Italy and renowned Ethiopian patriot. Unlike most of the Ethiopian hierarchy, he was not an Orthodox Christian, but born and raised a Protestant, Lutheran. He had attended Sandhurst, Sandhurst on an imperial scholarship, in other words, His Majesty's money, and was generally regarded as one of the finest officers in the Ethiopian army and widely popular with rank and file of the military as well as the general civilian population. General Amman had an impeccable military record and was referred to as, quote, the lion of the, Og the, the Ogaden, end quote, due to his heroic role in turning back the Somali invasion of Ogden in the early 1960s. However, his outspoken, his outspoken support for reform had alienated him from the imperial government and he had been retired from active military service. The emperor, in an act he often carried out on public figures who were outspoken in their criticism of his regime, had appointed General Amman to the Imperial Senate. It was, it, it was the type of punishment that would soon be looked back with fondness by political dis dissidents in Ethiopia. It was noted the emperor used to punish people with appointments to prestigious yet powerless positions or foreign ambassadorships. General Amman was popular, and the Derg was confident that he would lend them added legitimacy. One of his first public acts was to announce that Rasa Menegesha Siyum was to be henceforth was to henceforth be regarded as a traitor and an outlaw, and that he was not only stripped of his governorship of Tigray, but that he was also stripped of his princely title. He also issued an immediate recall to Prince Mekonen David Mekonen, or, or Mekonen, uh, Prince Mekonen, or David Mekonen, second son of the late Duke of Hara to immediately leave his military studies in the United in the United States and return to Ethiopia at once. David McConan promptly went into hiding. <laughs> Very interesting. 
Very interesting. What they all well, the traders against His Majesty really have to ask themselves: Was it really all worth it? Was it all worth it to bite the hand that fed them? And today, what shall they do? It makes Zephaniah chapter two verse seventeen so appropriate. Go read it sometime. Zephaniah two seventeen. Ye Ethiopians also shall be slain by my sword. 